Alright everybody, welcome back to another x Gaming video. x here, and today we have some more salt. We still have Xbox fanboys that don't understand how the Xbox Direct works, how game announcements work, and how they still feel like after that Direct, there's absolutely no possibility with their first-party games going over to other platforms. So, let's have some fun with this salt here and some uh, delusion, if you will, and let's jump to it. All right, so like I was saying, what we're going to go over is a lot of this good salt. Again, folks not understanding how uh, Xbox is really leaning towards that, uh, you know, publishing towards their other partners or other platforms via the games of their first party nature and stuff like that. So we're just going to have some fun with that and then also kind of sprinkle in some, uh, you know, the next phenomenon here that seems to be PAL World and some uh, gloating on the Xbox side and what that entails. So... Let's get right to it. Everybody's favorite Xbox person here, good old Colt Eastwood. And it's so, you know, fitting that his first name is Colt and sounds the exact same as what it would be a Colt C-U-L-T. However, let's go. After eight years, I'm going, or I'm giving at least, Elder Scrolls Online a second chance and I'm already liking it much more than I did at launch. Wow. You don't say. Now, benefit of the doubt is, yes, it's had a ton of expansions. It's had a ton of updates. It's a, it's a different game than what it was from the start. However, this isn't the first time he's dabbled and jumped back in, especially as of recent. But just a little sprinkle of, hey, we, we have Bethesda. Don't forget, Sony folks, we have Bethesda, and that's our thing. Even though you guys can play it, I'm really enjoying this game now. I wonder why. I wonder why, Colts. Why are you playing this game now? Why do you like it so much now? It's not because of just the updates alone, I'm sure. So it just never ceases to amaze me what kind of shenanigans he gets into, what kind of nonsense he just consistently posts. But you know, there's always something behind it. It's not any other third party game or anything like that. It's specifically something that's under the Xbox, Xbox umbrella, right? All right. so. Uh, what I want to do is pull up his next tweet that we happen to come across here, his next post on X, I say. Uh, if people want Xbox to go third party so bad that they, uh, you know, make up reveals about it, why aren't they doing the same thing for PlayStation and Nintendo? All right, so again, why they don't understand why this is a thing, all right? <laughs> it's leaning that way. There's no reason why Nintendo and PlayStation would have these rumors start when they're selling so well. We see the NPDs, which is the, you know, selling factor or what is, you know, initiating and showing the sales unit hardware wise for the Switch, PlayStation, and of course the Xbox series consoles and all the last generations as well. That being said, buddy, uh, you guys are getting outsold three to one. Even in your strongest territory, which is the U.S., you're getting outsold substantially. People are becoming more and more synonymous with wanting to just go PC at this point. Because what is the point? You get more, you know, benefiting factors from the PC side than you are on the Xbox side. So why are people going ahead and going with the Xbox piece of hardware they're not there's a reason for that and then let's not even talk about japan sales and i know xbox has never been strong in the japan territory i understand that but when you have the playstation 4 all of a sudden kicking your new gen butt whether it be the series s or the x oh that's a problem all in its own there as well i mean you're you promised and you thought you would get more of a, a hold a foothold on the japan territory with some of the games and you know, just the ambiguity of it all, right? And uh, that's just not happening. So again, Colt, to answer your question, to come full circle, sales matter. Nobody wants your Xbox console as a whole. It's getting outsold by an older gen Switch now, and we have the rumored Switch 2 coming up possibly this year. We have the PlayStation just absolutely putting a foothold down on that territory of what is happening with the Series X and S. Let's let's be honest. This is why this is why there's not rumors, and these aren't rumors that this is happening. Jez themselves from Windows Central and other analysts, you name it, are out there stating this. It's all over the place. 
These are rumors. These are a lot of insiders that are stating that this is going to happen. Let's move on. So, stating that, uh, you know, we have this guy, Baba, Baba, whatever you want to call him. I keep hearing from many PlayStation-centric channels whether or not Xbox games are coming to the Sony platform. It's weird. Xbox players don't ask if Spider-Man or Wolverine are coming to Xbox. Uh, so, yes, Xbox players still are hoping that Spider-Man and Wolverine eventually land on Xbox at some point in time. It's not just the PC folks waiting for those ports to come over at some point. Uh, Xbox fans are really wanting it. They've been salty about it. They've been, you know, very upset with the fact that it's not multi-platform for those franchises right now. Uh, and, you know... <sighs> It's the PlayStation centric channels are reporting on this because it's factually based. We are getting these hard rumors. They're not just rumors, they're from insiders. And yes, and until something is totally confirmed, it is still a rumor. But it's still a hard rumor at that. There are no even blatantly sprinkled out there rumors that PlayStation or Nintendo games are going to be going to other platforms. That is why this is happening. I don't know why you folks don't understand this. This has been multiple videos now that we've gone over this. This is more than likely going to happen. Maybe a couple games here and there for first party. It's not going to be the whole slate. It may not even be day one. I've been over this. This is why. So if you are following, if you are watching, this is why. So, some more news articles to back this up from Game Rant. Uh, this is back in November 7th, 2023, so not long ago. Phil Spencer says we need to think of PlayStation and Nintendo users as part of the Xbox community. Xbox head Phil Spencer believes that Nintendo and PlayStation users should be considered as part of the Xbox community as well moving forward. They're saying this over and over, not just the PlayStation-centric channels, but the flippin' CEOs and the figureheads of the company, okay? Next up here, we do have Microsoft can now be a good publisher on Sony and Nintendo and PCs and Xbox, CEO says. Quoted, build great, game, uh, great games and deliver them to folks across all platforms. With the acquisition of Call of Duty maker Activision Blizzard, Microsoft can now be a, quote, good publisher across all platforms, including rival consoles, the boss of the company has said. Now, some folks are trying to state that this is just has to do with Activision Blizzard. No, it doesn't. It makes sense, especially for your games as a service. Sea of Thieves, maybe the ones that didn't sell that well, i.e. Hi-Fi Rush. And again, Game Pass hinders those sales. So why not maximize those sales? It only makes sense. Your ecosystem isn't working. Buying the hardware isn't working. They put themselves in that foothold. Like I've said before, it is a way that they try to coordinate you to, you know, Identify yourself as a gamer to rent and utilize those services through Game Pass. That's what's happening. You're not going to net sales. So this is what's going to eventually happen. Again, Xbox says Bethesda deal was not done to take games away from other platforms. This was back in 2020. And he's right. It's probably going to be a case-by-case -case scenario. Like Phil Spencer said in the past, each game will be a case-by-case -case scenario. And in fact, those might be timed exclusives. He never said that they weren't timed, that it was a forever Xbox platform exclusive. Sorry. Again, Microsoft wants my Game Pass first party titles on every screen, including Switch and PlayStation. It's a bit of a change of strategy. Xbox Chief Financial Officer Tim Stewart has said, Microsoft wants to get Game Pass and its first party titles on every screen that can play games, including Switch and PlayStation, and what he calls a bit of a strategy change. I know, I just quoted it twice. I have to get this through those that don't want to hear or listen what figureheads and CEOs are stating what the strategy is going forward. This business is not your friend to invite you over to have dinner or to have a get-together at your favorite party place. They are there to make money. Making money means making sales. If they stagnated, which they have because they continue to not share Game Pass sub numbers were probably around 25 maybe maybe 27 million which isn't horrible but if it's stagnated where do they go from there no business like i've said in previous videos no business wants to sit there and stagnate and not make more money as a business you always have goals you always have goals to get better do better change this change that that's the way it is and again 
Xbox wants to be on all possible devices. Let's get this through everybody's head. This issue is that much of the debate arises precisely from the confusing communication that Xbox has had on the topic in recent years. In 2020, Spencer disagreed with the idea that each Xbox title was considered a potential release for the Switch. Quoted, I have a lot of respect for the role Nintendo plays, and I love having great games on their platform. I really don't like the idea for every one of our games. There will be this little rumor mill. Is it going to end up on the Switch or not? I think we should set better expectations with fans, he said. And this is the problem that I have with Phil Spencer. And this is why folks treat it as him being a car salesman, right? He constantly has to go back. He's there to sell the consumers and the fan base on the fact that you're protected. Everything's going to be okay. We're not going to have our games everywhere. There's a reason why you're in the Game Pass uh, and in the Xbox ecosystem. That's what's going on. And how things have changed in just a short three years. How much this, this whole industry has changed. On how business has changed. You dive into so many games, and if, if you didn't have that quick turnaround, and again, maybe Phil Spencer thought he would get a lot more subscription-based, you know, subscribers by acquiring Bethesda, Zenimax, all that stuff under that umbrella, by acquiring ABK. He would think in a heartbeat, well, now he had to change that, change that strategy because right away they did not approve of the deal for ABK due to the fact that you can't limit one of the best-selling game franchises of all time, which is COD, that has releases every year and pumps out those numbers. At least 10 years. Well, that substantially pulls it back, and that makes you rethink that strategy. Well, you know, yeah, in 10 years, we could probably make a lot, of more, lot more money and keep it in our ecosystem, but what business is going to sit on that and then change it? It makes more sense. Sega is very successful right now being third-party and being a publisher of all their games. Most of them sell pretty darn well and they are flourishing. I'm sure all the CEOs and the businessmen within the Microsoft Corporation is looking at Sega in a way and going like, look what we have. Why would we ever limit those first party titles away from all these platforms that sell way more than if we just kept it in our ecosystem? Not gonna happen, guys. Sorry. <laughs> so let's quickly go over some of the fun stuff here as well in regards to, you know, first of all, just, just a quick blip I want to put here, uh, just a quick uh, note that I want to put out there for the Indiana Jones game. Uh, it is made by Machine Games, the folks that did like the Wolfenstein, new Wolfenstein games and series and spinoffs, uh, made really great games. That That's not the problem. The problem is Indiana Jones, most of us were probably expecting or hoping for, even though it's Machine Games, Hoping for a third-party game. You know, take that risk and do it. No, or third-person game. They didn't. They ended up going first-person. Now, here, and it's not just IGN that's been sharing this stuff. It's been everywhere. This is their new narrative. Indiana Jones in first-person ensures it's not an Uncharted clone. Is Tomb Raider an Uncharted clone? Is an Uncharted game a clone of Tomb Raider? No. They, they're substantially different in their own ways, and they have different stories and unique, you know, gameplay factors. Yes, you're going to climb ledges, grab some guns, take out some mercenaries, blah, 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 all that stuff. There's going to be similarities, absolutely. It's just the way it is. That's, but to, to make, you want to see Indy. You want to see him in all his glory, not just when you're swinging with the rope and seeing the shifting it to third person or when you're climbing something, shift it to third person, then right back to first person. I'm not saying that Indiana Jones is, by Machine Games here is uh, not going to be a good game. I'm just a little disappointed as well as a lot of other folks that it's just not third person to, to mess around with that. You want to see indie they have the harrison ford likeness so you have the likeness and you only see it in cutscenes. when in detailed in cutscenes, that's really odd to me that's super odd and you have a phenomenal voice actor one of the greatest voice actors of all time out there up with nolan north yuri lowenthal and a plethora of many others out there ben Starr, a newer one i'm sure he's done stuff before but you know really coming to light because of final fantasy 16 and such and and you know voice actress of you know, Aerith and Tifa and just all these people, right? Doing such a phenomenal job. Um, but So it just, it's just, you're going to hear his voice throughout it, just in first person as well. But you just, 
I don't know. There's something about it. I, I find it weird. I find it odd that they're going with that narrative. Just wanted to put that out there. What the heck? Okay, quickly transitioning over to PAL World here. Uh, again, Peter Ovo, just a great one. So he's taking that third party, grasping onto it here. PAL World has sold 2 million copies and had 700,000 concurrent players across Xbox and Steam. PAL World Early Access has rocketed to 555k concurrent stream players and still climbing. The game is also available on Game Pass for any Xbox players willing to give it a chance. I will provide my early impressions later. Power World now has 500... Anyways, it goes on and on and on, right? I'm not going to sit there and read every little reiteration. I'm going to put it on here. But as you notice, he really drives home that it's on Game Pass and PC without saying that it's not coming to the Switch or PlayStation, but especially leaving out the PlayStation side. Um, so he's very happy at the fact that this successful game is available on Game Pass and PC. I wonder why. He doesn't have to spell it out and say, haha, it's not coming to PlayStation. Haha, it's not coming to Nintendo, which I'm sure he doesn't care if it went to Nintendo. But as long as it's not coming to PlayStation, I'm sure he's A-OK. -okay. So the underlying truth there is pretty hilarious to see. It's not just one or two tweets. I mean, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven. At this point of recording, seven tweets. Pretty quickly together, by the way, of Pal World. And it's in its accessibility on the Xbox and PC for Steam. <laughs> it's just, I mean, just grab it and run with it. All right. Share my thoughts on this in a moment. But next, uh, Boss Sean, this, ah, God, this guy so is totally separated from reality here. But look at Pal World. Holy cow, mind blown emoji, Xbox exclusive, Game Pass, PC, nothing in the works for PlayStation at all. I feel sorry for those people trapped on PlayStation 5. What a bad console choice. I mean, doesn't it suck, guys, to play games like Days Gone, Horizon, The Last of Us Part 1 and 2, Returnal, Spider-Man, did I say that already, Wolverine, um, gosh, the list goes on and on. Uh, what are we going to do? I don't know what we're going to do, guys. I, Final Fantasy VII Remake, Rebirth, um, wow, I don't know what we're going to do. That's crazy. Wow. 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 I, I guess I'm going to have to trade in my system, guys. I just made the realization that I picked the wrong console. I picked the wrong console. I, I, I should just get rid of consoles altogether, even, maybe. I, I don't know. I don't know. Just to play Pal World. He's right. He's right. No, he's not right. Um, <laughs> it's the funny part about this, guys, real quick, is the fact that, uh, you know, <laughs> early access games, if you know anything about gaming, if you're, if you're in here like these guys are for gaming, um, early access games don't come to PlayStation. They, they really try to comb through it. They're not perfect. We have some really crappy games on there and a lot of shovelware on there and pay to pay to win trophy games on there and stuff like that. But they don't do early access games. Ark didn't come over till later, much later. Uh, other early access games didn't come over till much later. They just now got Roblox. That took how long? I don't know if that was a time to deal on top of that, but regardless, if a game is popular enough, PlayStation and Sony are going to make a deal to have that happen. The FAQ, if you haven't seen it, they have one, just Google it. They said at this point in time or during the development, they didn't have plans for it to go to PlayStation, but that's not out of the question. They were gonna look into it. Sony's not gonna sit there and see something become a phenomenon here and not do anything about it when they can make a ton of money by throwing money their way and exponentially speeding up that process whether it still be in early access or not if this has what we have to look at here is does it have sustainability does this game have sustainability i really looked into this game a lot of gameplay uh, a lot of tips and tricks ones just to see how this thing is really working because i like to educate myself looks phenomenal i think the game's great i do think it's a win for game pass i do think they did a good job uh, making sure that that did hit Game Pass, not even just the Xbox, you know, platform, but just, or, you know, on Game Pass as well. And of course, Steam always gets those early access games, whether it be Valhalla or whatever, right? Um, 
So they did a great job. I'm not going to differentiate that. I'm not going to play that part down. I think that's great. And sometimes you got to take those chances. You don't want to, you know, have have one of those early access games that just doesn't pan out and be a complete scam. That does happen. So you do got to be careful. But I do think, uh, you know, Xbox does have a good early access program. I will say that for sure. Um, but for those that saying that it's not coming to PlayStation, just... Hang tight a little bit if you are really looking forward to it. If you are a PlayStation-only player, if not, if you have a Steam Deck, you can play it there. If you have a PC, you can play it there. If you have an Xbox, you can play it there. Um, but expect this to, to completely, as it gets bigger and bigger, and just does better and better, and, and the bugs are finite, they're controllable, they're not causing issues. Expect to see this on not even just PlayStation, but possibly even a version of it on the Switch as well, or even the Switch 2. Um, so we see a lot of that going on, um, but it's really interesting there But just kind of wanted to share that with everybody there at the tail end of it uh, Just we're using pa pal world for for console warring now on the Xbox side pretty hilarious at this point in time um, Won't be long before we like I said revisit this third-party thing And they're gonna be back in the dumps about the fact that their first parties are heading elsewhere more than likely that being said Let's wrap up this video guys um, and I just want to do a quick shout out. At this time of recording, I'm at 988 subscribers out of 1,000. We shot up from last time humongously. And uh, you guys have been phenomenal. I'm, I'm absolutely speechless. I, you know, was, was banking on if it's a good week, you know, about 10 subs a week. And I appreciate that. That still blows my mind. I'm like, wow, I'm getting 10 subs a week. Uh, but I really appreciate it. I hope you guys truly enjoy that content. Uh, and continue to want to see more. Would love to hear from you more. Uh, at, a, at a thousand, we'll see what happens. Um, I'd like to do at least a long stream or something, or if you want to see something else in general, let me know, of course. Uh, but definitely want to find a way to say thank you to everybody. Maybe I'll do a giveaway, like a $20 PSN card or something like that to say thanks and give back to the community. You guys have been phenomenal at supporting me. Uh, I can't say it enough. I'm, I'm honestly speechless. I can't, I don't even know what to say. Um, so thank you so much. Uh, I know we can hit that goal so soon. You, you guys have exceeded my expectations. Um, so thank you again so much. Definitely leave a like though, helping out this video, helping out that algorithm. Leave a comment down below. Would love to hear from you. If you haven't already, definitely consider subscribing. If you do enjoy what you see, want to see more. And of course, can't wait to give more. So that being said, enjoy the rest of your day, everybody. We will see you next time on the next X-Wall Gaming video. And until then, don't be a salty batch. Take care.